Thali is a feast for food lovers. A thali makes for the perfect assortment of delicious regional dishes on a single platter. On last thali that I made a veg one, I get so many requests for non-veg thali. So here I am presenting an another non-veg thali for all of you. Hello viewers, myself Shuparna. Welcome to Simple Food. In today's thali, I have served jeera rice, lachha parada, kima matar, kali chana masala, chicken cutlet, butter garlic prawns. Kolapuri chicken, mung dal halwa, sahi tukra and chas. I am going to start our thali by making kolapuri chicken. The uniqueness, flavor and taste of this dish come from the roasted and freshly ground spices. First, marinate the chicken with 1 fourth teaspoon of turmeric powder, 1 teaspoon of ginger paste, half teaspoon of garlic paste. Now mix them well. Marinate the chicken for 30 minutes. Now into a pan, take 2 teaspoon of coriander seeds, 1 teaspoon of cumin seeds, 2 dry red chilies, mace, 1 piece of black cardamom, cinnamon sticks, little nutmeg, 3 pieces of green cardamom, 6 to 8 cloves, dry roast them. I am making the kolapuri masala. We can also use the store bought kolapuri masala. Roast them for 2 minutes. Now add 1 tablespoon of poppy seeds, 1 teaspoon of sesame seeds, 1 fourth cup of desiccated dry coconut. Now roast them all together well. Make sure you roast them on slow flame and definitely do not roast them over otherwise they will taste bitter. Keep them aside and completely cool them down. Now into the pan add 1 teaspoon of mustard oil into the oil. Add 3 medium sized sliced onion. I'll fry them until they are nicely brown. The color for this dish comes out the roasting of onions so take your time to roast it. When the onion starts translucent, add crushed garlic. Fry them well. When the onions are brown, add 1 teaspoon of ginger paste. Fry them. Now add this fried onion and previously dry roasted whole spices into a blender jar and make a paste. Before making this paste, cool down everything, the spices and the onions. Now into the same pan, take 1 tablespoon of mustard oil, add chopped tomatoes, fry the tomatoes into the oil. Now add 1 teaspoon turmeric powder, saute a little. Now add previously made paste of dry roasted whole spices and fried onions and ginger garlic. Now cook this for 5 to 6 minutes with the tomatoes. Now the masala is nicely cooked. Add the marinated chicken. When the oils are separated from the masala, then add the chicken. Cook them for 4 to 5 minutes with the masala. Best thing of these dishes is that all spices are made at home so it tastes far better. Add salt to taste. Give a very good mix. You can prepare this delicious recipe at your home and enjoy its delectable taste with rice and roti. After mixing well, add water. Give a very good mix. Cover the pan and cook for 15 to 20 minutes on simmer. After 20 minutes, open the lid. Give a little mix. Add 1 teaspoon black pepper powder. You can dry roast the whole black pepper with the other spices. Sort a little. Add chopped coriander leaves to the curry. Give a little mix and kolapuri chicken is ready. This recipe has a different taste from other chicken recipes. The gravy turns out exceptionally good for its beautiful spice mixture. Now I am going to make black chana masala. It is mildly spiced curry made in onion tomato gravy with ginger garlic. In a pan, take 2 teaspoon of mustard oil. Temper the oil with 1 4 teaspoon of cumin seeds. Just fry the cumin. When this starts splatter, add 3 medium sized chopped onion. Fry the onions well. 
Now the onions are nicely translucent. Add one tablespoon of chopped garlic. Saute them. Add finely chopped chilies. As per your taste, fry them. Now add one medium-sized tomato. Mix them well. Now the time to add spices. Add half teaspoon turmeric powder, half teaspoon red chili powder, one teaspoon cumin powder, salt to taste, and one teaspoon ginger paste. Cook them until all the raw smell of the spices are gone. One thing, if your spice tolerance is less, then you can add Kashmiri red chili powder instead of red chili powder. Then it will add the color, not the heat of the chilies. Masala is nicely cooked. Add one teaspoon sugar to balance the taste. Mix it. You can add very little water to prevent the burning of spices. Oil are nicely oozing out. Now add previously boiled kala chana or black chickpea or chola. I soaked them for 10 to 12 hours. Pressure cook them for 8 to 9 whistles. Make them totally soft but remaining their shape. Mix them well. Cook them for 5 minutes. Now smash few of chickpeas with your spatula or a smasher. Don't smash all of them, just smash few of chickpeas. It will take time to cook. Now add 100 ml of beaten yogurt. Mix them very well. As the gravy has tomato, it has very much risk to curdle the yogurt. So mix it quickly. It is cooking for 10 minutes now. Water has reduced. Now add 1 4 teaspoon of garam masala powder and chopped coriander leaf. Give a very good mix and black chana masala is ready. Adjust the sugar later if you need because tomato and yogurt are both tangy. So adjust the taste of the gravy. It won't be tangy, not too sweet. Now I am going to make butter garlic prawns. It is the most easiest flavor packed prawns. Into the pan, take 2 teaspoon of white oil. Once the oil is hot enough, take the prawns into the oil. If you want, you can remove the heads of prawns, but I like them as they are packed of flavors. Just saute them little. Prawns heads are loads with flavor, but they should be fresh. When it starts to change its color, add 1 tablespoon of chopped garlic. It will take just 1 or 2 minutes. Fry the chopped garlic with the prawns. Now add salt to taste. Add little less as we are going to add butter later. Half teaspoon of black pepper powder. Stir it well. Now add freshly chopped parsley. Chopped coriander leaves. Saute them again. Now add half teaspoon of chili flakes. Mix them well. Now add water to poach the prawns. Add little bit of water. Just cook for 4 to 5 minutes on medium flame. Now after 5 minutes, add 1 cube of butter. Cook it for 2 to 3 minutes more. Add corn slurry. I make this slurry with 1 teaspoon of corn flour and little bit of water. It will thicken the water. Butter garlic prawns is ready. You can eat this prawn dish as a side dish with garlic bread also. Now I am going to make Matar Gima. It is a delicious ground meat and green pea curry. It's a Mughlai dish. The simplicity and ease of this dish makes it a weeknight treat. I'll marinate the mutton Gima. Add half teaspoon of turmeric powder into the Gima. Add one teaspoon red chili powder. Half teaspoon of coriander powder. Half teaspoon of cumin powder. Salt to taste. One teaspoon ginger paste and half teaspoon of curry paste. Before start the cooking, clean the kima well. Now mix all the spices with the mutton kima well. I keep little fat of the meat for better taste. You can add more spices while cooking the meat. 
marinate the mutton for 1 hour. Now in a pressure cooker, take 3 tablespoon of mustard oil. Temper the oil with 1 teaspoon cumin seeds. Then nicely crackle now. Add bay leaf. Now add sliced onion. I have taken 2 medium sized onion. Now fry the onion until they are nicely translucent. I am directly cooking into the pressure cooker. You can cook into a pan. Then cook them for 4 whistles into the pressure cooker. Now onions are nicely translucent. Add 1 teaspoon of garlic paste. 1 teaspoon of ginger paste. Now fry them well. The raw smell of ginger and garlic are gone. Now add marinated mutton kima. Kima is nothing but minced meat. Mix the kima very well. Cook them for 10 minutes. Cooking the masala with the kima is very much important. If you want, you can add more spices, more salt and more red chili powder at this time. After 10 minutes, add half teaspoon of sugar. Mix the sugar. All the spices are nicely cooked now. Oil is oozing out. Add little by little water to cook. When it seems dry, add little water then cook. By adding water, you can prevent the burning of spices. Now add water about 1 cup or little more. Give a nice mix. And cover it and cook for 4 to 5 whistles. After some time, when the pressure are naturally released from the pressure cooker, open the lid, mix little. In this recipe, the oil should be float on the top of the curry at the end. Kima are nicely cooked. Now in a pan, add 1 teaspoon of mustard oil. Add green peas. Saute them well. Fry the green peas for 6 to 7 minutes. You can cover the lid of the pan to cook them first. Add salt to taste. As you can see, they are nicely cooked. Now add cooked kima to the pan. Cook them for 5 to 6 minutes on simmer. You can adjust the quantity of green peas as per your taste. If you want, you can add a little bit of ghee to this dish. Now add half teaspoon garam masala powder. Give a good mix. The royal family served this dish at the special occasions and events. Mutter kima is ready for this thali. You can enjoy this with naan, roti, paratha. In this thali, you can enjoy this with flaky lacha paratha. Now I am going to make chicken cutlet. It is a must try appetizer in any party. It is easy to make and doesn't take much time. I take the chicken fillets, clean the breast pieces of chicken and cut into fillets. Into the chicken, add salt to taste, 1 4 teaspoon of black pepper powder, half teaspoon of chili flakes, little more, add finely chopped parsley, chopped coriander leaves, half of lime juice, half teaspoon of garlic paste and half teaspoon of ginger paste. Now mix them. I have taken 7 pieces of chicken fillets. Marinate the chicken fillets for 30 minutes into refrigerator. This recipe is so simple you can make it in an hour just. After 30 minutes. Coat the chicken fillets with flour first. Coat the both sides of the fillets. Just give a shake to remove the excess flour. Now dip into the egg. I just beat the egg with a little bit of salt. Turn it and dip it well. Drip off excess egg from the fillets. Now coat it with breadcrumbs. I add little salt, little bit of chili flakes and parsley with the breadcrumbs. It will add better taste to the coating. Now coat the fillets with the breadcrumbs. Now again dip this into the egg wash. Coat it well. 
Use the boneless chicken breast, slice them horizontally to make this cutlet and coat it again with the breadcrumbs. I just double coating them. At this time, press the breadcrumbs with your hands. If you want, you can give a shape to them. Also, you can check another chicken cutlet recipes that I made by using minced chicken. I'll give the link in the description box. They're nicely coated. Now, into hot oil, place the cutlets one by one and fry for 15 to 18 minutes each batch on medium flame. Heat the oil on medium flame. If the oil is so hot, when you place the chicken cutlets to the pan, they will burn by the outside but the chicken will remain undercooked. They are nicely frying. I have taken two of chicken breast pieces to make seven cutlets. After three to four minutes, turn them and fry them entirely. Chicken cutlets are nicely golden brown and crispy. Chicken cutlets are ready. This will be crispy from outside and juicy from inside. Now I am going to make masala chas. Masala chas is made with yogurts and spices and water. It's very light, refreshing and good for health. Into the blender jar. Take one and half cup of yogurt. It's about 300 ml of yogurt. Now add mint leaves, half teaspoon of roasted cumin seeds powder, one fourth teaspoon of asafoetida, half teaspoon of chat masala powder. Squeeze half of lemon juice. And salt to taste. I'll add little bit of sugar, about 1 teaspoon and half cup of water. It will be thick in consistency. Cover the lid of the jar and blend for 5 to 7 minutes. You can adjust the consistency by adding less or more water as you want. After blending, it's nicely foamy as you can see. Masala chas is ready. Serve it with ice cubes or set it into the refrigerator before serving. I am now going to make Sahi Tukra, the another sweet of this thali. It's different from the Mugdal Halwa. This traditional sweet recipe can be prepared in just few minutes. Add 1 liter of milk in a pan. Sahi Tukra is rich in both taste and texture. Shahi means royal and Tukra means to a piece. Stir well as if the bottom of the pan is not burned. Milk is boiling for 10 minutes. Add 3 tablespoons of powdered sugar. It will dissolve quickly. Add 3 tablespoons of condensed milk. You can also add normal sugar instead of powder sugar. Now mix them well. Milk is quite thick now. Add 1 4 teaspoon of cardamom powder. Add saffron milk. Soak some saffron strings into the hot milk for 10 to 15 minutes. That's enough. Now add chopped cashews, chopped almonds, little pistachio and give a mix. Add 1 teaspoon of rose water. You can see the milk thickness. It's a rubbery in form. Keep it aside. This would take 20 to 25 minutes. Now in a pan, take ghee, take the bread slice, fry them for 1 to 2 minutes. The bread slices should be brown and crisp. Do not fry the bread into oil it won't taste good use ghee definitely to fry them you can see the breads are nicely crisp now time to assemble everything first place the fried bread pieces now pour the milk over the bread rose water gives a very authentic taste to sahi tukra try not to skip it however top some cashews almonds pistachio Sahi Tukra is ready. Now I am going to make one of sweet dishes of this thali, Moong Dal Halwa. It is an addictive and delicious halwa made with Moong Dal and ghee. It's rich in flavor. Add ghee 2 tablespoons to a pan. It's easy to make this halwa on non-stick pan. Melt the ghee, add 1 tablespoon of semolina, saute it well, 
Mukdal halwa usually made on special festive occasions and special celebrations in India. Now add mung dal paste. I soak the dal for overnight. Then make the paste. If you do not have plenty of time, then soak them for four to five hours. Now start the mixing. Just continuously stir the lentils into the ghee. The flame should be low to medium. I have taken around 50 gram of dal, so I add two tablespoon of ghee. For this recipe, we will need big portion of ghee. Add sugar syrup. Make sugar syrup with one and a half cup of sugar and one cup of water and most important thing you just need to stir and stir cook this for three to four minutes now add one four teaspoon of cardamom powder now stir it well you can see the syrup has dissolved well in the mung dal add few saffron strings and chopped cashew nuts and almonds give final stir mukdal halwa is ready it will take time and it is hard to make but it's delicious to eat now i'm going to make the rice dish of this thali jira rice Jira rice is an Indian dish consisting of rice tempered with whole cumin seeds. Into a pan, take 1 teaspoon of white oil. Into this oil, add half teaspoon of cumin seeds. Let the cumin splatter well. Now add pre-cooked basmati rice. I soaked the basmati rice for 1 hour. Then cook the rice into the water with a little bit of salt. Fry the rice for 2-3 to three minutes. Make sure the rice has perfectly cooked, not overcooked nor undercooked. Now add salt to taste, half teaspoon of black pepper powder and sprinkle some chopped coriander leaves. Give a very good mix. Jira rice is ready. If you want, you can add little bit of ghee at the end. I am going to make our last thing of our thali, Lacha Paratha. It is a very popular paratha from the North India. Lacha Paratha is crispy, flaky, yet soft. Dust some flour on the paratha dough. The portion of dough is double in normal paratha balls. Try to give the shape in square. Not properly, but try to make them square. It will help to pleat them. Make a big flattened dough. Apply oil on the both sides. and roll it again with the rolling pin and make this giant one. Flat it evenly. Now apply ghee on the upper side. You can use your hand to apply the ghee. It will easy. Now dust some flour over it. Now start to pleat. Start from one side. Just follow what I am doing. By this way, you can have more layers in your paratha. Do the rest. I make the dough with all-purpose flour. Into 2-3 to three cups of all-purpose flour, add salt. Then add 2 or 3 tablespoons of ghee or oil. I add ghee. Then add the water as required. Then knead the dough well. Then dress the dough for 20-30 to 30 minutes covering by a wet cloth. Let's are complete now. Now roll it sideways. Lock the end well. You can see all the layers. Now apply little oil and roll it with the rolling pin. It would take little gentleness to roll it. If you need, you can add oil. Roll it to a big flattened paratha. It's ready. Now put 2 tablespoons of oil in a tawa pan. Make sure the pan is hot but not too much. 
प्लेस द पराठा एंड फ्राई द पराठा लच्चा पराठा इज क्वाइट थिक सो फ्राई देम ऑन मीडियम फ्लेम सो दैट दे फ्राई फ्रॉम द इन साइड वेल नाउ टर्न इट टू द अदर साइड इफ यू पुट द फ्लेम हाई दे विल कलर क्विकली बट रिमेन अनकुक्ड द लच्चा पराठा इज नाइसली ब्राउन एंड यू कैन सी द लेयर्स ऑफ द पराठा इट वुड टेक सेवन टू टेन मिनट्स टू फ्राई वेल लच्चा पराठा इज रेडी द रेसिपी लुक्स लाइक लिटिल ट्रिकी बट इफ यू फॉलो द स्टेप केयरफुली इट विल ऑल बी फाइन That's it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoy this thali and all the food dishes. I know it's not possible to make all the food at a time, but you can make one or two recipes or some from this thali. And surely inform me how they turned out. Do subscribe to our channel and share our videos with your family and friends. Give your feedback in the comment section. Thank you. Bye.